I'm Becky Simon, president of the League of Women Voters of Naperville. Welcome to Primary Voting 101, your guide to all the election changes. League of Women Voters of Naperville has a responsibility to observe our local election processes in Will County and DuPage County so that we can credibly tell voters that their elections are safe, secure, and accurate. We observe ballot certification. We serve as election judges. We are poll watchers. We watch election equipment testing. Last fall, we spent an entire week watching a recount. We watch vote by mail ballot processing. We watch early voting. We visit election equipment storage warehouses. We train as election judges. We demonstrate new voting equipment to the public. And most of all, we maintain good relationships with election staff in both counties. After all of that, League of Women Voters of Naperville believes that your elections in Will County and DuPage County are accurate and secure. The next part is up to you. It is your responsibility to cast a ballot as an educated and informed voter. Anything less disregards the efforts of those who fought to ensure your right to vote. When you vote, you honor the suffragists, the civil rights activists, and the soldiers who fought for your right to vote. For eligible voters, voting is both a right and a responsibility. Now I will hand it off to Ann Matthews. Ann? Thanks, Becky, and good evening and welcome. My name is Ann Matthews, and with me this evening is Gail Ryan. Gail, do you wanna just wave real quick? <laughs> Thanks, Gail. We serve as, the, as voter service team members within League of Women Voters of Naperville. Tonight, we will walk you through what a primary is, what changes are in effect for this primary, the who, what, where, and whens of voting, and an introduction to our online voter guide, vote411.org. Some housekeeping notes. As we go through our presentation, if you have questions, please utilize the chat function. We will answer questions at the end of the presentation. We will be referencing a number of websites tonight. Don't worry, after the session, we will send you a link to the presentation and provide you with a one-page information sheet that will list the websites we referenced tonight. At this point, Gail and I are going to go off camera for the presentation, but we will be back for you during the Q&A. Primary elections in Illinois. First of all, let's, let's define what a primary election does. A primary election determines which candidate will represent each political party in advance of a general election. For example, there are five Republican candidates and one Democratic candidate running for the Illinois 14th Congressional. The primary will determine which Republican candidate will face the one Democratic candidate in the November 28, 2022 general election. Illinois is considered an open primary state, which means that voters are not required to register with a party to participate. Furthermore, we do not have the ability to designate a political party at voter registration time. Illinois also uses what is called a plurality voting system, in which the winner of an election is the candidate that received the highest number of votes. The candidate does not need to win an outright majority to be elected. When voting in an Illinois primary, the voter is free to request either a Democratic or a Republican ballot, but not both. We wanna talk a little bit about what's new for the 2022 elections, and we'll start with redistricting. Every 10 years, the United States performs a census, a national survey to enumerate the population for taxation and political representation. After each census, redistricting occurs at various levels of government. The 2020 census results ushered in new elected districts, including the loss of one 
a U.S. congressional seat in Illinois, as well as changes for state and local districts. Due to the delay in releasing the official census data, Illinois rescheduled its primary from March to June of this year. These new elected districts go into effect for the November 28, 2022 election cycle. Thus, this primary, you may see that your address is now represented by new districts and new candidates. To check your sample ballot, please see your county election website. And if you would like to see a visual representation of your new districts, we will be providing links to these maps after the session. Another thing that is new this year is permanent vote by mail. Due to a new law in Illinois, all voters may elect to participate in vote by mail programs on an ongoing basis. Voters may designate which types of elections they want to vote by mail and may change their elections in the future. Sign up for this option at your county election website. If you live in DuPage County, there's exciting news. You have new voting equipment and hopefully you had a chance to visit one of our demonstrations that we put on throughout the DuPage County section of Naperville. The new voting equipment is called the Heart InterCivic Verity System and it replaced equipment that had re reached its end of use. The Verity System is made in the United States and certified by Illinois as meeting the highest election security standards. The Verity system allows for 100% on-demand ballot printing for both early voting and election day voting and is not connected to the internet. Something else for DuPage County, you can vote anywhere in DuPage County on election day. Due to new equipment, and new Illinois law, DuPage County voters may now go to any DuPage County polling place to cast their vote on election day. An election day state holiday. While we will not have a state holiday for June 28th primary, we will have a state holiday for the November 8th general election. Now let's talk specifically about the voting process. Voting begins with voter registration. If you are unsure about your registration status, check your county's election website or visit our wonderful voting tool called vote411.org. We will be talking more about vote411.org later in the presentation. Some important dates for registration. For reference, May 31st was the last day to register by mail. June 12th, a mere few days away, is the last day to register online. And if you still need to register after that, you can do so in person up to and including election day, June 28th at an early voting location or your local polling place. Please note, if, you're re if you register in person, bring two forms of identification with one having your current address. This chart shows the voting options available in Illinois. We are fortunate to have multiple ways to cast a vote. You may vote in person, either during the early voting window or on election day, or a voter may also utilize the no excuse vote by mail option and return the completed ballot via the US mail or at an official drop box. Let's take a closer look at vote by mail. To apply in DuPage County, a voter can fill out an application online, download and print an application from the county website, call the election division, or pick up an application for a vote by mail ballot in Wheaton. In Will County, a voter can also fill out the application online, download and print an application from the county website, call the county clerk's office, email the county clerk's office, 
or pick up an application in Joliet. While the state deadline for requesting vote by mail application is June 23rd, we highly encourage voters to request your vote by mail ballot by June 14th to give some extra time for mailing. Once you've received your vote by mail ballot, please read all of the directions and fill it out very carefully. In DuPage County, you may return your ballot via US mail, no postage necessary, or via drop boxes located at the, the County Administration Building, early voting locations, or at a polling location on election day. In Will County, you may return your ballot by US mail, no postage necessary, or via an official drop box. Official drop boxes can be found in the parking lot of the county clerk office, it's affectionately called the Beast, or a remote drop box. The closest remote drop boxes to Naperville are the 95th Street Library in Naperville and the Fountaindale Library in Bolingbrook. Vote by mail ballots are not to be dropped off at polling locations. Importantly, all vote by mail ballots must be postmarked or returned by June 28th to be tabulated. Please note that Will County remote drop boxes will close the end of business on June 17th. So keep that in mind for your scheduling. A couple more things be before we leave vote by mail. Can I track my vote by mail? ballot? Absolutely. To sign up for this service, please see the county election websites. How about this scenario? You're interested in voting by mail, but then once you get the vote by mail ballot, you decide you want to vote in person. You absolutely can do this. Actually, I've done it myself. You must surrender your vote by mail ballot at an early voting or polling location and then you will be given a new in-person ballot to vote. If you live in Will County, there's a short informational video on vote by mail processing on the Will County website in the press release section. And for fun, as of yesterday, there were 6,108 early person votes and return vote by mail ballots listed for Will County and DuPage County is listing 795. So we're off and running already. These pictures are of ballot boxes. The first one on the left is the outdoor ballot box at the 421 Administrative Building in Wheaton. And on the right is a remote ballot box inside the 95th Street Library in Naperville. Now let's talk about in-person voting. Illinois allows early in-person voting. For this election, you may early vote from June 13th through June 27th. Early voting locations in DuPage County nearest to Naperville voters are the Fox Valley Mall, the Islamic Center of Naperville, 75th Street location, Lyle Park District, Rec Center, Naperville Municipal Center, and the DuPage County Fairgrounds. In Will County, the nearest early voting locations are the Naperville Municipal Center, you get a two for one there, the 95th Street Library in Naperville, Fountaindale Library in Bolingbrook, or the Will County Clerk Office in Joliet. Please check location for our hours of operation. Voting in person, the old fashioned tried and true way of voting. Lastly, voters can still, they can still do it on election day. Hours are from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. If a voter is in line at 7 p.m., they are legally allowed to vote. To find your polling place, you may refer to your current voter ID card, visit your county's online lookup facility, or visit vote411.org. Remember, if you live in DuPage County, you may vote anywhere in DuPage County on election day. So let's say you, you have a polling place 
close to your DuPage County work location. You are free to vote at that polling place as opposed to trying to get to your home one before or after work. One last option I wanna make mention of for certain Illinois voters is curbside voting. This allows individuals with disabilities to schedule a car side delivery for, of a ballot for voting. Please contact your county clerk for more details on this option. Now I would like to introduce Gail Ryan, who will educate us about a very helpful voting tool called vote411.org. Gail? Thank you, Anne. Um, well, a uh, question for all of you is, are you prepared to cast your ballot yet? Um, as election day approaches, we wanna be sure that you're prepared to make an informed decision. And that's where Vote 411 comes in. It can help you check your voter registration status. It, you can learn about the races and the candidates that are on your ballot. And it can be a source for other election related information, including checking registration deadlines, finding your polling place, and finding links to candidate forum videos. I wanna take the next few minutes to show you where and how to access this information on Vote 411. And I'll mention it later, but I wanna mention it here. I encourage you to just go to the site and look around because there's a lot of information and there's a lot of different ways to get at the information. So it's worth, a, it's worth a look. So let's start at the home page, which is shown here on the screen. Um, the first three buttons you see on the screen, that first one on the left says register to vote. This will link you to the State Board of Elections website, where then you can follow through and register online. Obviously you wanna pay attention to um, deadlines there. You can also verify your voter registration status. Let's say, you know, someone you know isn't sure if they're registered or not. If they click that second button, again, it will take them to the State Board of Elections website and they can um, enter their address and some other information and verify as to whether they're registered. But today we're going to focus on that third button on the home screen, and that is find what's on your ballot. This is where you can learn about the races and the candidates that will appear on your ballot for the upcoming election. And all candidates in races impacting Naperville, Roselle Bloomingdale, and Wheaton were invited to post their biographical and campaign contact information. They were also asked to respond to three questions. Now, unfortunately, we don't have 100% participation yet, but many candidates have taken the opportunity to speak directly to voters, via Vote 411. And our hope is that you will find this information helpful as you make your voting decisions. So when you click on that, find what's on your ballot button, this is the pop-up screen that will appear. And just, you'll enter your, your address and that will tell the system and help it determine what races should appear on the ballot that it produces for you. When you can click on submit after entering your address, you're taken to this screen, the Your Voters Guide page shown here. And since the June 28th uh, election is a primary, you do need to first select a party so that you can view the specific ballot that you would see when you actually go to vote. And this step won't appear obviously in the, in the November general election. So you'll select a party from the pull down menu. Um, you, you do have the option, you could choose to view all races, in which case you would see the Democratic and Republican candidates for all races, but obviously that's not what you'll see when you go to the polls. And then you just click on the go to my races, that blue button that says go to my races. And you will be presented with this screen. So um, you'll get a listing of all the races. The ballot example here starts with the Illinois U.S. Senate race and then Illinois governor, et cetera. And again, the races here should appear in official ballot order. And you can compare that to um, ballots that you can view on the county websites. And then to get started and start reviewing and learning more about the races and about the candidates running, you just click on, you can start with the first race and begin reviewing that candidate information. And here's what that looks like. Now I just picked the DuPage County Board District 5 page. Um, so it starts with, you see the title of the race, 
you'll see a description of the race and how many candidates you, you have the opportunity to vote for. Obviously, most races, you're going to choose one candidate. In this particular example, though, um, you have the option to choose up to three. Um, in addition to a general description of the office, in many cases, we also provide salary information for the various offices. And when you get to the judicial races on your ballot, you will see there's a link to the bar association ratings for those candidates. And again, just a something, another bit of information to help you evaluate your choices. Now, at the bottom of the page, um, you're going to see thumbnails of the candidates that are running for office. That's down here by star number two. And if you click on a candidate, you will then be able to see their details. So their biographical information that they provided and responses to their questions if they responded to them. And you can also compare candidates on this view. So once you click on a candidate, the blue compare buttons will pop up. And in this case, I've selected to compare candidate Janner with candidate Gustin. And again, so I can kind of read side by side um, find links to their websites and their uh, social media if they have it, but then I can also view the, their responses to the questions. Um, and then I can also choose to make my voting choices. So let's say I'm going to decide to vote for both of these candidates. I click that checkbox, it turns green, and then that will allow me to advance to the next race. And I can choose to go through my ballot and make my candidate choices um, for every race. And when I get to the end of the ballot, I'll then be able to see a summary of all the candidates that I selected. And then I could either print that, I could email the summary to myself. And then that's handy to have whether I, if I'm going to vote by mail and I'm sitting at my kitchen counter, I can have the list of candidates that I selected after doing the review, or if I'm going to vote early in person or vote on election day, I can have that with me when I go to the um, voting booth. Now, there are other ways to navigate through the ballot. If you don't want to make those candidate choices, but you just want to review the races and the candidates and do some studying, you can just use the navigation links in the ballot header area to move forward and backward through your ballot. So again, you're back up at the top of the screen and starting with the DuPage County Board District 5 race, I'm on that particular page. But if I wanted to return to view the DuPage County Treasurer race, which is the one ahead of this race on the ballot, I just click on that title where the arrow on the left side of the screen is pointing. And that's a live link. It'll take me back to that race. If I wanted to advance and, and view the DuPage County Forest Preserve President race, I would click on that title. And again, that's a live link where that arrow on the right side of the screen is pointing. And again, it's just an easy way to navigate through the ballot, review the races and candidates without having to go through the process of making selections. Now, before you leave the ballot area, be sure to scroll all the way down the page um, where you will find links to the candidate forums, those that have been recorded and are available via link. Now, the title on the website says it's candidate debate videos, but in our situation, we, um, we do ca candidate forums. And again, so the YouTube links will appear here for the various candidate forums that we've recorded another bit of information to help you make decisions. Now, in addition to learning about what's on your ballot, which obviously is important, Vote411 is also a great source for general voting information any time of the year. Now to access the, this area of the website where this general information is found, just return to the homepage, which as in most websites, clicking on the Vote411 logo will take you to the homepage, no matter where you are on the website. And then you'll want to click on those three horizontal lines in the up, upper left corner of the screen. It's also called a hamburger. And that will take you to the election information page. And here's what that page looks like. So once you're here, you select your state from the pull-down menu on the left to access the information on a variety of topics about voting in that particular state. Now, we'll take a look at information about Illinois. But for instance, if you had a student who was going to be moving to a different state and you wanted to understand what the voting requirements were in that state, 
you know, all you've got to do is come to vote 411, come here, enter that state and look and see, um, learn about voting information in that particular state. So we chose Illinois. So the top of the page highlights that the next election is the primary on Tuesday, June 28th, but you all knew, knew that already. So it also reminds you that the key registration deadlines and what those dates are. And it also highlights when the next election is gonna be held, which is the general on Tuesday, November 8th. And then just below the blue heading and that blue box, there's a more resources section. And that has links to, again, view your ballot. So if you wanted to jump back and go back and look at your ballot, you could do that from here. You can find your polling place or also register to vote with the link on this uh, page. Now, if you continue to scroll down on this same page, you'll come to the Illinois Voting Information section. And here's where it's just a, a listing of general voting information about everything from absentee ballot process or vote by mail process to the voting machines that are used in Illinois. And typically you'll get an overview of the topic, a couple of sentences, along with usually a link to the appropriate state resource where you can learn more. Again, it's a handy section. You don't have to remember multiple websites. You can just come to vote 411 and let it point you in the right direction. And again, I encourage, like I mentioned earlier, I, I encourage you to visit the site look around. There are many paths to find voting information, and there's a lot of resources at your fingertips here. Um, in this example here, I just selected uh, drop boxes. I wanted to learn more about them. So it says vote by mail drop boxes will be installed in some locations. Check your state board of elections website to see if there's one in your jurisdiction. I click on that blue link, and it takes me to the Illinois State Board of Elections website where I can then select the election I'm interested in learning about and the jurisdiction where I am. And I find the answer to my question about drop boxes. As I said before, again, just you know, take some time, take a look around at the website, get familiar. I also encourage you to share the website link with friends and family. It'll help them learn about the candidates on their ballot during election season but it can also serve as a source of voter information throughout the year. And again, if you know a recent high school grad or college grad that may be voting for the first time, please encourage them to visit Vote411. There's a handy checklist for first time voters. And if they're gonna be moving out of state, again, it's a, it's a great place to look for information about voting in other states before they move. And now I'm gonna turn things back to Anne for a few closing remarks before we take any questions. Thanks, Gail. Um, and again, I just wanna reiterate, vote411.org is a wonderful tool, um, 365 days of the year. So go on out there and, and take a look. This slide simply gives you some key dates we've talked about, June 12th, last day to register online. June 13th through the 27th is your window to vote in person early. June 23rd, last day to request a vote by mail application. However, we, we would like you to do that by June 13th so you don't have any mailing issues or hopefully don't have any mailing issues. June 28th, you can still register in person up to and including the 28th, which is our primary election day. If you're interested in seeing the election process up close and have a free day, consider becoming an election judge. Election judges are critical to free and fair elections as they man our polling places. Both Will and DuPage counties are still accepting applications to be primary election judges. For more information about the election judge qualifications, responsibilities, training, and remuneration, please visit your county's website. The next two uh, slides, we just wanted to give you a visual on what these home, home screens look like. So in DuPage County, dupagecounty.gov backslash election, this is what the home screen looks like. We've provided a QR code that will allow you to go jump directly to this page. And on the next slide, we have Will Counties and their willcountyclerk.gov backslash elections, as well as a QR code to take you right there. 
And with that, we've reached the end of our presentation. Thank you. Um, we have our contact information up on the screen for both Ann and Gail. We encourage you to visit our website, lwvnaperville.org, and again, a QR code that will take you directly there. And we encourage you also to follow us on any one of our social media challenges. <laughs> I should say, follow us on any of our social media cha channels. Having a hard time getting that word out. And with that, uh, Gil, are there any questions? There are. Um, let's see here. Um, one is, does Will County have new election equipment this year? And Will County does not have new election equipment this year. Their goal is to have new equi equipment by the next presidential election. But that is subject to um, a lot of things happening. But that is the plan. And the other question is, how old do you need to be an election judge? Um, students, I, I want to say, Gail, correct me here. I want to say we're back to 18. Right. I believe that is the case. We, we had a, a brief amount of time before the last presidential where they dropped the age down a little bit lower. But now I believe we're back up to 18 in both counties. Um, both counties do have um, encourage young people to come in to be election judges. So if you are on that younger end of this age spectrum, uh, take a look out there. there. There are great programs and it's a wonderful way to learn about your democracy. And right now that is all the questions we have. I don't know if anyone's got anything else. Okay. Well, you guys, you have our, our email addresses. If any questions come up, please don't hesitate to contact us. Again, we will be sending out a copy of the presentation, a link to it, as well as an information sheet with all of the various websites that we've referenced tonight. And with that, I'd like to turn it back to Becky Simon. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. This will be posted on our YouTube channel. Join us on Saturday, June 18th, 1 p.m. on Rotary Hill as we celebrate Juneteenth. And again, Wednesday, July 13th, 7 p.m. on Zoom, when we will talk about coal-powered electricity in Naperville. Thank you and good night.